Enough. What comes to you? Tell me. Enough. Stopping some kind of bad pattern. Stopping something bad. A limit of some kind. What else? Full. I'm sorry? Full. 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 Enough. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Tired. Tired. Settling for less. Thank you. That's what I thought until I started on the enough journey a few months ago. It's always been a boring word. It's a word of limits. Tracy Lynn themes enough, right? That kind of thing that you say. It's about ending something that is supposedly uh, not good for you, as you were saying. And then I had the experience a few months ago, I was nominated for a couple awards. And uh, I didn't want them. I didn't want to go for the nomination. And I was putting, I was getting a little stubborn about this. And my business partner, Kamal Basra, she came in and she said, you know what, what's this all about? And I said, I don't believe in awards. And um, I think it's a masculine paradigm. And it, it's, <laughs> it's competitive. And she's going, uh-huh. And she's coming back to me. She says, this is really good for business. It's really great exposure. And then I come back and then... She'd, she'd say, you know, this is, this is the type of image building and it's gracious to accept, you know, all that stuff, right? And finally, I, I was just like, she was getting disgusted. And, and I said, well, we'll just wait five or six years till I'm good enough. I could maybe win something. She walks out. She turns around as she's walking out the office. She looks at me and says, you're good enough. And I was like, I'm good enough. And I was like, it's still, it's still you can see, good enough. I sat there at my, and then I have to say it was one of the, the most meaningful, valuable things somebody had ever said to me. And I was like, good enough. So I, I started walking around thinking, I'm good enough. You know what happens when you start doing that? What happens? No? You get better. Well, actually, for me, maybe, for me, the arguing started. The arguing. No, you're not. It's got 10 pounds on you. No, you're not. As soon as you do this, you'll be good enough. You'll be good enough if. You'll be good enough when. You'll be good enough. And I was like, whoa, this is big. Oh, my gosh. This is like a disease that gets spread all over the place, right? <laughs> then I started, with Kamal and I, we work with women. So we, we are financial advisors. We, in our work, typically work with people that have half a million or more in investable assets. We do investment strategy and financial plans. We also do a day a week of pro bono work. So we work with people in poverty. Believe it or not, wealth and poverty are equally complex, as you might guess. So they both require the same amount of degrees to work on. It's just one doesn't get compensated and one does, right? So in the course of doing this, we, had, we have high net worth women, and that's what we specialize in working with. And we had a run on these women, one of whom had got a settlement of $30 million in a divorce. And she was 70 years old. And for months, she was coming in. She was losing sleep. She was getting sick to her stomach because she didn't feel it was enough. <laughs> and then we started seeing it didn't matter if somebody had $5 million or $30 million or 2000 The concept of not enough was something that was inside of us and had nothing whatsoever to do with the number. So here we are financial advisors crunching numbers all day long and the fact of the matter is is that enough isn't a financial concept, right? So we started trying to layer this new sort of burgeoning journey that we were on into some of our financial planning work. And Financial planning, there's five steps to a financial plan, and really, if I was just going to download a piece of financial information into every person's brain in this country, it would be the five questions that actually determine how you're going to lead your life financially. The first of those questions is, where am I now? And when I used to teach these classes in the States when I was all enthusiastic and kind of innocent, and I would have people fill out their net worth forms and their cash flow, and then I'd find the second class only half the people would come. <laughs> it's like, well, this is, I did this two or three times before I started to, to figure out that even checking on where you are now can activate a sense of inadequacy or shame or confusion. So that question 
just to even look at where am I now and to do it from a position of who I am is enough and what I have is enough informs that financial planning question a very different way, doesn't it? Instead of it being something we put off or pass over to our husbands or don't look at for 15 years, if the concept is what I am, what I have right now is enough, then all of a sudden this starts to become a much more uh, journey, much more illuminating, right? Inspiring even. And when I was listening to Christy Clark speak this morning, like, I'm just so blown away sometimes by how enough we are here. We have a premier who's not a whack job, we've got fresh <laughs> air, we've got, we've got clean water. Everybody who came here today was walking on their own two feet. Nobody here looks like they're starving. You know what I mean? It's, we have enough. And when you start walking around and it, all it comes down to is you're breathing the air and drinking the water of this incredible province and looking outside and looking at what we look at every day and knowing a bomb's not being thrown at you, like I'm not trying to be like your Jewish mother or something here. I'm actually saying that you have enough and I have enough. And from that place, then I can look at where I am now, and I can, which is the most powerful economic question that you can ever ask yourself. And to keep on that for the rest of your life, to know what that is at any given time is actually a wellspring of power that you can't even begin to grasp until you start to do it. The next questions, which is where am I going and how am I going to get there, if they have been rooted in this concept of adequacy, and self-sufficiency, instead of it being one more thing where the tail is wagging the dog, one more place where you feel like you can't quite catch the bus, you actually are able to bring to yourself and magnetize to yourself all the resources that were there to start with because now you're open to it. So when I was hearing the Hip Hop Mama, I was actually back there going, I have enough and when things get rough, I can take it on the cuff because I'm no cream puff. And I was like, you know, we need to. We need to have the good enough rap, right? Because that's a very different, more playful and sustainable place to work from as we create both a personal economic future and a social economic future.